Hello again, everyone. I have changed up my gear and abilities for this next fight here. I'm gonna have two crystallizes, although they're really bugged in this next fight. Talk about why that's necessary. And I'm taking control of the Emerald Death, so I have more control over the team's overall DPS and can do more healing with the extra vitality from that. This fight is pretty well balanced and fun for most classes, but for Strength Buyout, it is miserable luck-based garbage. So I've come up with a way around that, I think. They have this shield called Duty that gives them 3,000 shield block and also they regenerate a bit every turn. The problem is if you hit them with Crystallize due to a bug that actually replenishes back to full. The bigger problem is that if you ever kill one of them without having killed the other one, then the remaining one could just start instant killing your teammates super fast and you just lose the fight. But because as Strength by you have no guaranteed hit moves, and because you have no control over the team's DPS, and because you'll miss these guys because they have super high evasion motion at the time, it's just impossible to have a reliable way to bring them both down at once with this build. If I respect into like a speed bio, I can easily do it. Any other class can easily do it. But as this build, this setup, there's just no way to win consistently. So I came up with a stupid plan, which will make me able to win without pure luck. And that plan is to just stall for 99 turns until this guy's duty buff wears off, and then deal with him. I need to avoid killing this guy in the meantime, or when he wakes up, the other city council member will start doing his instant kill mode. But if I can have this guy injured but alive when the other guy's duty wears off, it should be a good deal easier to then take them out. Their DPS when they're both active is really substantial, which is why it's important to just control them like this rather than simply stall for 99 turns, which would be the obvi other obvious thing to try to do. It's quite easy for them to kill you before you can slowly, slowly chip them down while constantly missing them. But with my teammates hitting randomly, I think we'll be able to keep this guy alive for a while. Especially given he also has self heals like Justice Done and his constant regeneration from uh, duty. And then I can crystallize freely once duty has worn off of both of them, because then I won't be replenishing their shield. I can use that to control them. So this is my clever, at the same time, clever and stupid workaround to this fight. See, their damage is massive, at least when they're critical, which they often do. I think criticals, honestly, are a bad part of the game. I just think that there's no need to have so much luck with missed chances, hit chances, critical chances, and enemy critical chances, and things like that. I think I don't like them in most strategy games, but in Legend Runs in particular, they're really a big problem here because there's just not much margin of error anymore. I'd like to make sure that guy doesn't get too weak, I will let my teammates attack at random, and I will just hit this guy so they don't accomplish anything. Maybe put them back on defense mode for a bit. Maybe I will hit him once while he does heal up or something. He can't heal very well right now. Again, they can really disrupt the strategy, they can randomly make it so your damage is bad or your healing is bad, so you just don't have full control over how things go. I'll just throw a stun on that guy and get him out of my hair. His Veridex is now almost dead. Oh, maybe I won't. Random luck. Missing with your important moves. Again, every other class has lots of guaranteed hit moves, but Strength Bio does not. Bit of overkill here, I think, but oh well. Well, the city councilman has regenerated significantly, so I think I'll probably hit him with a wound now. I say probably. I might hit him with a wound now. We'll see if I hit or miss. Miss. Okay, never mind. Well, let's just focus back on keeping rolled alive. Easier if he used his defensive move. 
There we go. It'd also be easier if he happened to get a stun at some point. He does have a decent chance of inflicting that, it just seems to almost never happen. Quick strike the guy who's stunned to just guarantee it actually works. Need to be able to restun him. I could use more focus. I think so. Here goes. This move for sure is not only my health, but my focus regeneration too. Put them on defensive mode for a little bit here. I'll just smack him for a bit of damage. Hmm, this guy's in danger now. And it's gonna be hard to save him. There we go. Well timed critical there. A stun on this guy would be nice, so I'll try that. It only buys like one turn, but that still helps Veridex get you know, head on his heels and helps Roll get back his greater purpose. Well, now that he's regenerating, let's have them go all out on him again and just try to keep him stable. And I'm going to hit you with a wound or not, we'll see. Okay, that's about enough damage on him for the time being. Wouldn't want them to go too far and actually kill this guy and make me lose the fight that way. Okay, I can do a reform this turn, and then I can do... Uh, crystallize next turn. Put you back on random mode. Nice, a stun there. All right, let's make sure Veridix doesn't actually do too much damage right now. And I'll just pummel that guy. Shame to waste some of greater purpose, but I think it's a necessary evil. Because above all, we must not take out the city council guy or all this work is for nothing. No, they're focus firing him. Come on, man, heal yourself. I guess I could switch it and crystallize this guy, but that would just replenish his shield, and nobody wants that. There we go, okay. So you can regenerate now. And we'll just mindlessly pummel the invincible guy. I'll throw an early heal on him and give him back more focus so he can heal people better. I do feel like he's running low on that. Okay, let's get back to the offense against this guy. He's recovered enough. Didn't expect this all to hit. Maybe I got too aggressive there, but we'll see. Probably should have done a break on him there instead, but oh well. I do a bit too much damage to be safe. Okay, everyone stay on defensive mode. How about you get a heal? Eh, 
just pass the turn. There we go. Alright, City Councilman, give yourself another heal, why don't you? I could crystallize my own teammate to keep him from attacking, but probably shouldn't. Just gotta keep on managing it. Well, we're all stopped attacking him, so that's good. Some of the pressure came off that way. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, the pressure's back on. He can't use his healing move on himself anymore. Now Verdix is attacking him, even though we have a guy to heal. He's just trying to make us lose here. And now he's almost dead. Okay. Don't kill him, Rold, or I'll kill you. Sixty turns now I've stalled. I have some more folk. Oh, no, there he goes. Come on, man, heal yourself. There we go. Okay. That's better. And that's no longer better. Okay, he's no longer regenerating. That moves on cooldown. And that was a lot more damage than expected. This is becoming a nail biter. Bad world. Bad Veridux. Very bad world. Just heal yourself again already. Cool than that must be longer than I thought. I will say, if you try to actually fight them both at once, it's another complication making this fight just awful. They do it often enough to really be a nuisance there. damage was reduced to almost nothing. Not good. And he still didn't heal. Okay. Okay, well he wasted his turn, so that's good. That's good. Still focusing the wrong guy, so that's bad. He's still not healing himself, so that's bad too. Critical, so that's also bad. There we go, okay. I was definitely getting worried there. And this time Veridix doesn't have... Oh, he does have focus now, okay. But at least I got one turn of regeneration. Yeah. That's better. Now we can't have him get too much and get back out of control again, to where I can't usually kill him in 20 turns when this finally, finally is at an end. Oh, I guess we really overkilled the heals on that guy. Oh, fuck 
All right, that's about enough. I think I'll put them back onto defensive mode. Critical, but it's okay. He's not looking too great, but okay, that's better. All right, I think we'll leave him alone for regenerate in peace for a turn, and then I'll sick these two guys on him again. Although I guess Rold could, yeah, he could dispel it. That's still okay. That was still in the acceptable HP range. So back into defense mode a little bit further than planned, and we'll just keep on going. Okay, let's have them go on full offense, and I'll throw a wound onto that guy. We can have two turns where they're on the loose. Oh man, I hope they don't just kill Varadox during this one opportunity that I gave them. Oh, I missed. Okay. Great. Well, forget that. You guys go back on defense, and let's stun that guy one more time. Throw you a reform. Missed my attack there, but that's okay. And now I think I plan to juggle them a little bit with crystallizes. Said, like these guys hit that guy, then I'll crystallize him. And then let's have them go on to aggressive mode will hit randomly. So some of the attacks at least will go through to this guy. No, nope, or we could get pushed back into defense already. Well, the stunned guy, get back my focus, and then restun the stunned guy. I'm gonna put them on defensive mode for now, so they don't uh, lunge ahead while he's momentarily vulnerable to them. Let's try another wound. Sooner or later, we'll hit. Oh, nice. Now we're talking. Now every hit on him is guaranteed. I mean, my allies might not hit him, but... Or might not choose to attack him, I mean, but at least we won't miss. Oh, another stun. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is good. Oh, 
well, I went for the wrong guy there, but oh well. Let us focus that guy down. Alright, now we've got a couple turns to ready ourselves, then he'll have one turn of casting his super self buff, and then he'll start nuking us. So we have that long to live. I'll throw a wound on him now. Hopefully we can get uh, Veridex, not Veridex, rolled to do uh, Sunder on him. All right. Comes down to this. We did it. Okay, that god-awful fight is over. Sometimes they drop their weapon, Wrath of the Council, which gives massive instinct, but I think unlocks after the final boss in Legend, so not really terribly useful. And I will save it there, and then pick up with the rest of the zone. Alright, so, I've got eight more points in strength. And I really already kind of run out of useful things to be leveling up here. I guess I could get another level in break so that it'd be free, although I don't think I'll actually put it onto my bar for the next fight anyway. I'll think about it. I do want, I think, to get Disrupt back, and maybe I'll keep Subversion too. And then, do I have anything new to equip? 21. You know, Sunny being level 21, I think can now actually equip useful things, unless I misremember what level everything unlocks in here. Yeah, level 21, okay. Can I wear anything good? So currently I've got terrible footwear. 3.15.5. Well, that's a straight upgrade. Is there a better one? Uh, the speed would be nice so I could stop missing all the time. 13.11.13. 13. I think overall I've just got to go for the Imperial Marchers. Those are the secret police shoes. Gloves. I've got 11.18.8. So that is strict upgrade. 11, that's also an upgrade. This one would give me more vitality, this one would give me more speed. I really feel like I want to stop missing as much, so Royal Grips it is for me. What does Rold have in those slots? Oh, he also has garbage. Okay, I think we're going to look at another set of Imperial stuff for him too, but let me just check it. Yeah, everyone, yeah I think we're going to go for the same thing. Another Royal Grips, another Imperial Marchers. We can sell those off. And those, are any of these things now worth considering? Not that, uh, maybe, that could help keep us alive. It's good to know that at least we can afford it now to help deal with dog damage and things like that. I think Azure Flatblade is the sword that the androids use, could be wrong. And Veridex still can't equip anything good, so I guess he just doesn't get to be useful. All right. So the specialist is the real problem here. The good thing is the Android Guard, I think, will shield the secret police because he's on the top. I mean, he shields himself, but then I think he'll shield the secret police after that. I think if we just go for that guy, yep, he's easy target. So this could be really bad if the specialist was up top, but I believe just the order will make it so this uh, Android Guard protects the wrong guy and gives us a much better opportunity. And we still need to actually hit. You know what? Let me give you a subversion and maybe you'll live that way. Assuming they actually hit you. That's better. Let me crystallize that guy now, though. Now, chloroform takes him out for a long time, but at least it's him. Rather than me or something. I just keep missing this guy with wounds, so I can't inflict any real DPS on him. And he is by far the biggest threat on this battlefield. I know the Android will waste at least one of its upcoming turns just, you know, reshielding itself, so that'll help decrease their effective DPS for a little bit. And I can just recrystallize that secret police, and we'll keep working on the specialist. What I'm really afraid of, of course, is black metal, as usual. Now that he's got 
Oh, now that that guy's crystallized, this will be less helpful than it was before, but it's something. Oh, especially given that he has black metal on him, yeah. Yep, this is definitely going to be helpful. I'll probably need to crystallize him to save his life. We'll see. Alright, well you are now out of ammo. Or not ammo, out of focus. And we therefore stun yourself next, I believe. If we can just take out the specialist. Ow, but now the specialist is going to take reduced damage, so... Eh, not great. Still, I think we've got him. Black metals are... Oh, okay, fine, fine, fine. Just take him out now. There we go. Okay. Well, I will start disrupting that guy so I can deplete his sh uh, shield focus. But I probably better crystallize him so he doesn't reshield himself. And then we can work on the secret police, perhaps. Or this, my allies can fire randomly and maybe hit, maybe not hit. And then once we've depleted that guy's focus with another disrupt, then stun himself, making it much easier to deal with him from there. Okay, so take out his focus, he'll then be forced to stun himself, and then he'll be the lowest HP target, so then we can all focus fire on him. Yes, okay. Lower speed doesn't matter when your enemy has been stunned. Okay, I'm gonna take him out before he's able to reshield himself. I think so. Yes. Okay, great. And this guy stands back up, ready to be killed. Alright, yeah, we're in the clear from now on, I think. Just give him another wound, and then press forward. Secret police, again, are not really much of a threat on their own. None of their buffs or debuffs matter very much. They've got superficially high stats, but that doesn't really mean much in Sunny. This is not really a game about stats, it's a game of moves, mostly. Moves and buffs. Which I think is good. That's much more interesting than a game that's all about how high are your stats, as many RPGs are. Not that they don't mean a lot in Sunny, they just mean much less than what your moves are. Okay. The specialist... Oh, yeah, those could be useful. Let me compare them to our current pants. And Veridux can now graduate to our big boy items, too. Cyborg leggings. Could be useful to keep him alive, maybe. Let's see how these compare. So, 11, 57, 4. I don't like that 4 very much at all. Those are some... pretty bad numbers. But it seems like it's probably overall a good bonus to put onto a uh, rolled. Didn't lose that much vitality. 1731 versus 50. Eh, I don't think we really want that stuff. So, what does Veridux have for gloves and shoes? Currently, he's got 4, 0, 15, 13. So this is actually not a straight upgrade. The instinct is worse. Grips of command. So eight, that's an upgrade. 28, that's an upgrade. Strength is an upgrade. A little bit less vitality. It still seems it's probably worth it. I'll just go for that on him. And then for shoes, he's got nine, six, sixteen, six. I guess I'm kind of specking him out to be a little bit more of a healer here. Which isn't the most useful thing for him to be doing when I've got some of the heals, but... Oh well. Should be a pretty good setup overall. I could give him the cyborg pants and then stop worrying about him dying. I think we did pretty well there, though. Not too worried. Oh, I should be worried. Okay. Alright, I think everyone's going to get a new setup of 
cyborg gear. Let's put some version on you so you don't die. I forgot about this fight. This is going to be a tough one, and I wouldn't be surprised if I need to restart it. But we're off to a decent start so far, at least. So, you know, that's pretty good. I think I'd better just crystallize that guy, too. Oh, I can't do that, right. At least I'm hitting. That's something. That's big, in fact. We're gonna have both Bloodhounds to deal with now, though. That's gonna be painful. Ooh, boy, is it gonna be painful. Okay. Can I throw a subversion on you? Keep you alive a little bit longer that way? Barely. Alright guys, please pummel the guy at 198 HP. That's not who I told you to pummel. We've almost got it though. If they just go for rolled for this turn, I think we'll be in the clear pretty much. I will crystallize the- oh no I do. Now we're in some trouble. Okay, does he have enough wound damage to kill him? I don't think so. Oh, he did. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Let's just uh, show that guy's focus so he doesn't bother us. And now if I can keep him under crystallized, I think we've probably got this. The specialists are really dangerous, but on their own, which he effectively is, because crystallized the set is so good in this zone in general, on their own, he's manageable. The only real problem is if he chloroformed me at the wrong time. But they seem to like targeting even that move that doesn't do damage onto the guy who has lower HP. So, so far he hasn't chloroformed me because I have the most HP. Yeah, that part's not great, but I can recrystallize the dog now at least. Let's get that guy... Let's get you out of focus so you don't do black metal on him. And I'll throw him a reform. Need to get back on focus so I can recrystallize the dog. Although maybe it'd be more time efficient to not do so and just not stun him for four turns when we can't hit him. Okay. I mean, the dog is still a threat, but it's not anywhere near as terrifying as it was when we first started this zone. We've got more HP. We've still got our worker hats on. The HP is the most important thing. They just can't instant kill us anymore. So even two of them plus a specialist wasn't as terrifying as I thought it would be. Okay, we're most of the way there. I think our improved speed compared to where we were at the beginning has also helped. Like, we didn't miss as often as we usually would against Bloodhounds. Still hurts. No, oh, I guess my subversion is not going to be useful. That's okay. Alright. Well, potential tricky fight. Cleared with style, I'd say. World level 22. Are there any good level 22 items that we have? I bet there's at least one. Patrol headset, is that worth considering for him? Oh no, that'd be replacing his hat. I don't think we want that. Imperial armor now. 17, 28, 11. It's a downgrade in speed. It's a big upgrade though in everything else. Well, in strength, so there we go. Dressed as a secret policeman now, pretty much. Except for his hat. 9, 17, 30. How does that compare? Yeah, this might be worth considering for rolled. What's he got currently? 28, 28, 56, 34. So... It would be better except for his vitality. His vitality is getting pretty poor. But how does it compare? 140, 142. I think it's worth considering at least. Okay. Let's try that and move on. Okay, this one shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. 
I'm not as well prepared for as I could have been. If I had known that it was going to be double Android guards, it would have had more disrupts. But I'll just start draining their focus so they will sun themselves faster. And in the meantime... Keep that guy alive, and then maybe Crystal is one of the Android guards and take it from there. Well, if I was to crystallize this one... That should work pretty well. Oh good, we've got a lot of stuns coming here. That guy is going to just take out... Spend his turn just restoring his force field, I think. Yep. I still unfortunately has a lot of uh, focus left, but if I throw a, uh, another trip onto the next turn, that should still deplete all of that, then he'll set himself, I think. And he basically wastes his turn anyway. Okay. Alright. Wave goodbye to your focus, and then you can stun yourself, and then we can get back to pummeling the secret police who's not being guarded by the guards. a wound and not going to make faster progress through his massive hit point bar. So much crowd control on this class with crystallized and the ability to just uh, take away their focus. Really, really useful stuff. Maybe I will do a reform on him. Make sure nothing goes wrong. Top guy's gonna do a force field, I think. If I drain his focus, I think he'll still have enough that he won't force field again. Uh, sorry, won't stun himself again yet. But it'll be a step toward getting him to next time. Did he drain his own focus to load up that he'll now force field? Or not, I keep saying force field, but he'll now stun himself. Yes, he did. Okay. Oh, great. So now we want to target this guy. He can shield himself, but oh well. Then we'll target the other guy. And if I throw a Disrupt on the bottom guy, I think he will then uh, stun himself. It's not a perfectly efficient setup here. We'll need to waste a few turns there where you know, they're each... Invincible for a little bit. But we've made some progress. And I'll just throw a Crystallize on him and keep him out of the way. The other guy's shield will now wear off, and then he becomes the obvious target. Hit him with a wound. I don't think we can do quite enough damage unless we get very lucky. Worth a try. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'll drain his focus now, I think. And then he'll shield himself. Oh, actually, though, then he'll stun himself at the wrong time. I'm going to crystallize him now. And we'll just wait. And then when that wears off, he will then... Uh, stun himself as long as I drain his focus, and then we'll just kill him. Alright, I think that's the last Android Guard we'll be seeing before the final boss. Imperial Armor. I guess we already have a copy of that. I can't wear it. Android Armor. Can't wear that before the end here. Alright, it is time for the final boss fight. Which is not quite as hard as some fights are once you know how to do it. But is definitely a fight full of several different puzzles as you go through several different phases. Where you need to know how the enemy works and get some experience with them before you can really tackle them reliably. I think I need to have four disrupts, because that is the only way that this build can counter the Guardian Cannon completely. Useless for the rest of the fight, though. What are they planning? I won't let you kill me, you filthy corpse! I'm the mayor! 
Get out! Get out or my guards will make you! Guard! So the Guardian Cannon is some kind of automated defense turret, which I noticed bears a striking resemblance to the Hydra and Fireclaws boss from the previous zone. My theory is that the Hydra and so forth was actually just a hallucination of fighting against these automated cannons that were installed down there to defend the workers against the tunnel beasts. Anyway, I'm going to crystallize the mayor to keep him out of my hair for a little while, and then I'm going to start using Disrupt on the Guardian Cannon. It has a killer move that scales up massively with its amount of focus. Basically, if it has at least 40 and it shoots somebody, they just instantly die. If it gets a lucky critical, even like 30 focus can kill one of your guys, but criticals are their own separate problem. His attack is extremely powerful. When the mayor wakes up, okay, good. Yeah, a stun there will be a big help. We can now actually focus a bit more on this guy. This is very much a multi-phase fight. I mean, first of all, we have to take down the Guardian Cannon, but even after that, the mayor himself goes through several different phases where he uses different moves. Oh, I made some good headway there while it was stunned. Can we take it out this turn? Yes, okay. Next up, the mayor. Now, in the next phase, he's going to give himself the ability to instant kill people by massively multiplying his damage. At least he can instant kill the weak people like Roll and Veridux that way. I think I can survive his hits, but even for me, it'll be uh, hazardous at least. There we go. Do I want to do anything to... You know, I wonder what happens if I disrupt him. Maybe he can't do his killer move if he doesn't have any focus. We'll try it. This phase will end eventually. He still hurts. But eventually he'll dispel and rage off of himself and go back to fighting in another phase. So I'll try to deal with him that way. Just control him for the time being. While my allies do the damage. In the next phase, he starts taking out your teammates with moves that stun them for 8 turns and make them do no damage for 8 turns or no healing for 8 turns. If you have only 1 or 2 people, that's pretty problematic to deal with. If you have 3 guys, it's not so bad to have one of them taken out. But if you have just 2 guys, and one of them is stunned for 8 turns, good luck. And the situation, of course, is pretty close to hopeless if you have only one person left who then gets stunned for 8 turns. Even the Baron's stun in Sunny 1 wasn't that long. And then uh, the next phase of the fight revolves around using some damage over time buffs and debuffs that can enhance each other. Where, again, if you have multiple people, then it's not so bad. But if you have just one person getting those things stacked up onto him, that can be lethal fairly fast. It does seem like my approach here is working. This is stopping him from doing his doom attack that would kill these guys in one shot. So this approach is more useful than I thought it would be against him. I knew it would work against the Guardian Cannon, and I wasn't sure about the mayor. Oh yeah, that guy can't do any damage now. Eventually, he will dispel his own enrage, then we can move on. There we go. Okay, time for the next phase of the fight. Well, your damage is not as bad as I was thinking, but greatly reduced. And you can't... Okay, he got that backward. You uh, disabled the damage on the healer and the healing on the main damage guy. Who's going to get stunned for it? I'm going to get stunned for it turns. Okay, so that part is unfortunate. He has, as you see, massively multiplied our HP for the time being, so the guys who've been ruined aren't necessarily easy for them to take out, but he does pretty heavy damage anyway. A weird section of the fight, for sure. So I have no nothing to do for, like, four more turns, pretty much. But the allies are making some progress, at least, so it's pretty good so far. Uh-oh. That is gonna hurt. That combination of peace and unity does heavy, heavy damage. I was hoping Rold would save him there, but Rold decided not to save him, so down he goes. Okay. Hopefully, Rold and I can pull this out still. I'll just dispel his focus now. We're most of the way there. 
so it could still go wrong, but I think we've gotten past most of the dangerous phases. If you have two guys left alive at this point, you're probably in the clear. He just tries to heal himself back up, which I think would put him in another phase, because it's based on his HP, but I'm not certain about that. He might be permanently in the uh, next step once you get to this stage. Oh, you hit him instead of doing what I wanted. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. We'll be set back by a turn there. Almost got him. There we go. That time he did his defensive bonus instead of attacking. And there we go. All right. Final boss fight in Sunny. The mayor's name, Boris Livingston, by the way, and some of his item descriptions are references to some mayors of London. Ken Livingston and Boris Johnson. Wait a minute, you you're a zombie? Why did you help us? Your kind never helps anyone. Man, don't discriminate just because he different. He helped us overthrow the mayor. Yeah, that's right, he did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Don't mention it. <laughs> Would you mind telling us what the hell is going <laughs> Fine. You deserve some answers. You see, the ZPZ like the music are using now. these people. They want the zombies to remain a threat because they earn money by protecting people from them. That's what they do. A group of scientists tried to develop a cure, but the ZPCI sent their black ops to shut down the operation and kill everyone involved. They're gonna counter this somehow. That ambassador didn't seem too worried about the uprising. Let's track him down then. Beat some answers out of him. Hugh's been overthrown. Boris Livingston, the appointed mayor, has been disposed of. This is a major blow to our organization, as Hugh is a large part of our economy. We need to crush this rebellion, make an example to the world. Shall we call down the nuclear strike? No. We shall be using the seed. <gasps> oh, not the seed. And then sadly, Sonic 3 was never made, so we never got to find out what the seed was. The iPhone Sonic game might give us a clue though, although in that game the ZPCI are manipulated into being bad by the real villains, rather than being themselves an evil conspiracy that tries to keep the zombies a threat to extract money from people. In any case, in that game at least, the Seed is a giant space-based laser that can wipe out cities and, more importantly, also mutates the survivors into some kind of ultra-zombie, basically. And that of course would work well for this version of the ZPCI that wants people to send the money for fighting zombies. So I think it's plausible that that is what the seed is meant to be in this game too, but who knows. It is entirely possible that the developer's ideas changed between this version of Sunny and the iPhone one, because many things in the story are different. Well, that concludes another fun run of Sunny 2. I highly recommend checking it out yourself on Flashpoint if you haven't already. The game has a ton of replay value because all the three classes feel quite different. There is also even some content after this. But the story ends here, and so does the Legend Run challenge that I set out to accomplish. Still, if you haven't played the game before, I do highly recommend checking out those two bonus zones. There are some fun puzzle fights there. I hope you enjoyed this mini-series as much as I did. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Illusory Thunder, Masternet DH, Advance Warrior, Gregory, William Wakefield, Kenny Boggs, Danny Hall, and Jeffrey Morse. Have a great day, everyone!